Hi everyone, I'm Jamie from Young Caregivers Association. We're a charity that works with children, youth, and young adults who take on caregiving responsibilities in their home. So this can look like people with brothers and sisters with disabilities, or maybe a mom or dad with a chronic illness, like diabetes or something like that. Um, today we're going to make a coping bag. So you should have gotten your bag of supplies from the library and it is going to have four crafts as well as two work pages that we're going to work through on this video together. So as we're working on it, feel free to stop, pause the video and um, do your craft and then move on because the video will be pretty fast moving. Before we start, I wanna show you this page. This is the page that um, has what the bag contains as well as other items you will need. But the most important part is this last paragraph. It says, hey, Please get an adult to help you with crafts that you find difficult and any crafts with risks such as hot water or scissors. Never use a stovetop, kettle, or sharp object without the permission from a guardian. So please, please, please check with an adult before you do any of the crafts as well as always ask for help with things that you find difficult because we do not want anyone getting hurt. And since this is a virtual program, we can't be there to guide you. So it's your responsibility to uh, reach out when you need help with something. So the first craft is our DIY stress ball. So you will need from your bag the balloon, your baggie of rice, as well as some sort of funnel. So this is the one item that you don't have in your bag. So I make a funnel out of a plastic water bottle. This could be any sort of plastic bottle or some people actually just have cooking funnels or things in their kitchen. So if you want to make your water bottle funnel, you just take an empty plastic bottle and you get someone to help you cut the top off and then you should be left with just the mouth part. So what you're going to do for the water bottle um, and the balloon is you're going to actually take the lip of the balloon and the top of the water bottle and you're going to put it around the water bottle. Once you do that, it should look like this. And then you're just going to make sure that it's centered. Once you're done this, you can slowly start working your rice into the funnel and into the water bottle. So you can pour a little bit at a time and then wiggle it around until all of the rice that you can fit is in the water bottle. Don't overflow it and try to cram all of the rice in the bag if it's not fitting, because then it's not going to be a good stretch. Uh, it's not going to be a good stress ball. It's just going to be too full, not squishy. So sort of make it however much you want um, and then you're going to tie off the end. So once you have some rice in your uh, stress ball, you can actually push down and make room for more. And then eventually all of the rice that you put in will go inside. You're gonna take it off. Sometimes it's hard to tie a balloon, so ask an adult to see if they um, can do it better. And there's your stress ball. So you can use this as a fidget toy um, when you're feeling anxious. I like to bring my stress ball to the doctors if I ever need blood work or need to go to an appointment. Um, you can keep it with you and use it anytime you sort of just need to release some tension. So this is a good tool to keep in your coping bag or bring with you wherever you need to go. For the next activity, we're going to make our mindfulness jar. So this is a jar full of glitter glue and glitter, um, clear glue that we put hot water in. And then once the hot water melts, sometimes it takes a day or two, you can shake it up and you use it to calm down. So there'll be glitter and glue swirling around in your jar. And what I like to do is count down with the glitter. So when it's all up in the air, you go one, two, three and as the glitter settles you count till it's all the way at the bottom and then hopefully by the end of the countdown you have settled down as long uh, with the glitter so you need your jar you need your tin of sparkles you need your container of clear glue you need your glitter glue and you need your plastic spoon once you have all of those you're going to find a way to get hot water. So this could be the hottest water you can get from the sink. This could be boiling water. You could boil water on a stovetop or a kettle. But like I said, please ask an adult because this craft does contain hot water and it could hurt you. So you're going to be very, very careful. 
So as the water is boiling, you can start putting the contents of the sparkle, the gl uh, glue, and the glitter glue inside of your jar. As you can see, I have super hot water. The kettle's hot. When I pour it in the jar, the jar is going to be hot. So make sure that there's no dangers around you. Make sure you have someone to help you with this. And you're going to put your hot water into the jar. So don't fill it right up to the top because you're going to want to shake it. So right there is about good. And you're going to stir it with your spoon. Remember, it's super hot. You can see it's steaming. The sides are hot. It's going to stay chunky, like all the glue and the glitter for a day or two. So don't worry about getting all of the chunks out. You're just gonna stir it to the best of your ability and then get someone to help you because it's hard to grip. Twist the top on. So I'm touching this and it is very hot. I can't keep my hands on it for longer than a second. So you need to be very, very, very careful. Once this is done, don't try to shake it and play with it while it's hot. Just put it aside. For our next activity, we're going to make a coping chain. So out of your box, you're going to take the construction paper strips that are paper clipped together. You should have five. You might have more or less, um, but everyone should have five. What we're going to do with our coping chain is on each strip of construction paper, you are going to write one example of your favorite coping skill. So a coping skill is something you do to make you feel better. So for example, it could be taking a warm bath, um, petting your pet, uh, watching a funny show, reading a book, walking a dog, taking five deep breaths, and so on. Once you have them all filled out, I will show you how to staple them together. Um, but let's write our activities. So I have all of my strips ready to assemble. So I wrote deep breath, walk the dog, water the plants, cook a healthy snack, can't see it, play outside. So to assemble them, you're going to always do them word side out and you're going to fold them into a circle. So your first one, you just staple and almost make a bracelet. Your second one and all the others, you're going to make also the same way, but you're going to intertwine them. So make sure the words are facing out and do it again. And after you do them, you should be left with something that sort of looks like a chain link or a banner. And you can keep this in your bag or you can hang this somewhere um, that you see every day, like your bedroom. And when you need it, you go to it and you pick something off of the chain and you can participate in that activity and use it as a coping skill when you're not feeling the greatest. The last craft we're doing today is my favorite. It is called a Zen garden. So a Zen garden is a little sand garden that you can utilize, use forks and rakes and decorate it every single day differently to match whatever you're feeling that day. Also playing with sand and moss and stones and shells is a therapeutic activity. So people like to keep these in their living room or sometimes right beside their bed. Um, it does have sand in it, so be careful not to make a mess. Um, but you can utilize these when you're not feeling well or when you, ju you just need to get your mind off of something. So they're a very useful coping skill to have. Or you can just keep it in your bag and utilize it when you need to. So for this one, you will need to take out your plastic container of sand this is very thin plastic, so when you're taking off and on the lid, just be careful you're not going to break it because we only have one. You're going to take this white baggie out and it has all the contents you need to make your own personalized Zen garden. And like I said, you're going to be very careful taking off the lid. Do one corner at a time because this is what you uh, will be making your Zen garden out. So you have your sand and your baggie. When you open up your baggie, you're going to find everything you need. So in my baggie, I have some moss. You should also have a, a tumbleweed. 
everyone should have shells. You're going to have some sea glass. My sea glass isn't sharp, but yours might be, so be careful touching your sea glass. And the last thing you're going to have is your pick. This is what we're going to use as a rake to move around the sand, design your Zen garden, and put everything where you want it to be. And once you're done designing it, you're going to put everything in there, including your rake. You're going to gently press down on the sides, make sure it's closed, and you're gonna keep your Zen garden somewhere safe. And like I said, you can change the design every single day. That is the point of a Zen garden. So we're done our crafts for the day, and now we're going to move on to our two work pages. Our first work pages um, is a DIY trophy, so a do-it-yourself trophy. So when you're not feeling your best, it's really hard to think about the positive things about yourself and to remind yourself how truly awesome you are. So this trophy is designed to fill out all the positive things that, about ourselves, and you can write those all around it, and you're going to pick your one top skill to write in the middle. So it says awarded to where you write your name and then for their blank. So is it for their listening skills, for their baking skills, for their friendliness? What are you the best at? So you're going to write it in the bottom and then you're going to decorate your trophy however you want and keep it in your bag somewhere or somewhere safe so that you can remind yourself that you do have skills and that you are an important person and that you're the best at something. And you're going to use that skill to build confidence when you need it. The second page is life must do's. It's called my mission. So there's room to write 10 different things that you want to complete in your lifetime. So this could be people you want to meet, places you want to see, um, maybe somewhere you want to live, somewhere you want to visit, jobs you want to have, any goals that come to mind, you're going to write on this sheet. You're going to fill out the bottom that says your current age and um, you want to complete them by a certain age. So for example, current age, 12 years old, and maybe you want to complete these by the time you're 20. And then you're going to fold this up, keep it somewhere special. I keep mine in my coping bag, but you can keep it wherever. You can put it in an envelope, somewhere safe, and you're going to come back to it when you're that age and see how many you've done. Sometimes when we're always supporting our families or when we're busy, when we're busy with schoolwork or just dealing with the pandemic and things that keep us a bit low it is so hard to be motivated and have goals so we're going to use this page to do that we're going to keep track of our goals and we're going to hold ourselves accountable to some of them i mean we don't have to accomplish all of them if they're just nice to have and they're nice to stay motivated so those are all the crafts and activities we have for your coping bag i hope you really enjoyed the activities so you're going to have your two work pages your stress ball your zen den or your zen garden you're going to have your jar which is still really hot right now so remember to be careful and you're going to have your coping chain Keep all of these somewhere safe. Make sure they're there in case of emergency, in case that you need to feel better right away. Share them with the people you love. Maybe someone you know would benefit from taking a second and counting down with your mindfulness jar. And just take a break. And remember to always take care of yourselves. So have a great day. Um, enjoy doing your crafts. And please reach out to the library or myself if you have any questions.